Welcome everyone today uh, to this lecture. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Deepthi, uh, who is an assistant physician in the Department of Neurology. Uh, she's finished her uh, MBBS and MD medicine from uh, CMC uh, Vellore, and she's completed her DM Neurology from CMC Ludhiana, and she has joined back in Department of Neurology. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, good afternoon, all. Um, I uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, my Department of uh, Neurology, Dr. Sanjit and Dr. Prabhakar and Department of uh, Medicine, Dr. Uh, Tambu for giving me this uh, opportunity to talk, talk and take part in the Neurology Lecture Series. Today will be the uh, third talk in this uh, series and we'll be discuss discussing uh, a, an approach to myelopathy. This will be the outline of my presentation. The first half of the presentation will be discussing about the neuroanatomy localization uh, about the uh, cross-section of a spinal cord, its ascending and descending tracts, blood supply, com compressive versus non-compressive lesion, how to differentiate, extramedullary versus intramedullary lesion, how to differentiate, and so, uh, concept about co conus, epiconus, and corda equina, and then differentiating fe uh, features. The second half of my uh, talk uh, will be on the etiology of uh, myelopathies, uh, which will be the vascular, infectious, inflammatory, metabolic, toxic, structural, and uh, spondylotic and the hereditary uh, myelopathies. Uh, uh, taking on from Dr. Prabhakar's initial um, talk on the uh, localization, clinical localization, uh, any neurological deficit which uh, shows a motor weakness and a sensory involvement along with an autonomic involvement that forms a hallmark of a spinal cord uh, uh, disorder. Uh, we'll be talking about the five-step approach about when we uh, are facing with a patient who has uh, suspected to have a myelopathy. We need to figure out whether the symptoms and signs suggest the disease in the spinal cord. What are the longitudinal structures uh, which are involved? That is the ascending and the descending tracts and what are the systems affected? What is the transverse or cross-sectional level of the involvement, the sensory level, the motor level, the autonomic level, and the reflex level, whether the myelopathy is a compressive or a non-compressive myelopathy, and are there other neural structures which are affected along with, uh, uh, myelo uh, uh, with the cord? Those are the roots and the uh, nerves. Now, uh, if I can draw your attention uh, towards the uh, structure of the uh, spinal uh, cord, so a part a CNS structure which starts from the inferior part of the medulla and all the way uh, till the uh, coccygeal uh, region, and uh, the the parts of the uh, spinal cord are the cervical, thoracic, lumbosacral, and the um, coccyx. And the, there are the two enlargements, cervical enlargement and the lumbar enlargement. These enlargements are because they house the motor neurons which supply the uh, limb muscles and uh, for uh, supply the limb muscles, both upper limbs and the lower limbs in case of uh, lumbar uh, enlargement, thus uh, helping in further fine tuning of all the uh, movements of the uh, distal uh, muscles. And from each spinal cord uh, segment, uh, there is a, a spinal nerve which uh, comes out from the dorsal uh, root there is a sensory root uh, sensory uh, nerve and from the ventral root there is a, a ventral nerve which joins uh, after exiting the uh, uh, spinal cord to form a mixed spinal uh, uh, nerve there are 31 uh, spinal uh, cord uh, uh, segments uh, the uh, cervical being eight uh, lum uh, thoracic being 1 to 12, lumbar being 5, and uh, 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 um, sacrum and uh, 5 sacrum and cox coccyx being 1. The vertebral column uh, in the embryological uh, development grows much faster than the spinal cord, uh, uh, spinal cord structure, hence the levels uh, sometimes don't, uh, the levels don't uh, correlate. So the upper cervical cord level is same as the same vertebral body cervical. However, the lower cervical uh, cord level is one level higher uh, in the vertebral column. Upper thoracic uh, 
अपर थोरासिक इज टू लेवल्स हायर इन द वर्टिब्रल बॉडी लोअर थोरासिक इज टू टू थ्री लेवल्स हायर लंबार कॉरेस्पॉन्ड्स टू टी ट्वेल्व टू टी टी टेन टू टी ट्वेल्व वर्टिब्रल बॉडीज इन द वर्टिब्रल कॉलम एंड सेक्रल कॉर्ड कॉरेस्पॉन्ड्स टू टी ट्वेल्व एंड एल वन of the uh, vertebral uh, column the spinal cord is housed by the uh, vertebral column which and each vertebra has uh, multiple uh, parts of uh, uh, that there is a, a pedicle there is a vertebral body there is a superior vertebral notch superior articular notch transverse process spinous process all the and the uh, space between the two uh, vertebrae is the uh, um, disc and uh, between the two vertebrae there is a intervertebral foramen or the neural foramen where the spinal nerves um, uh, uh, exit uh, spinal nerves uh, exit now coming to the cross section of the um, uh, spinal cord the central portion of the spinal cord uh, is by the uh, gray matter of the spinal cord which is h shaped or butterfly uh, sh uh, shape which houses the all the motor uh, uh, nu uh, nuclei and the uh, uh, the gray matter divides the rest of the uh, uh, spinal cord into three parts one is the posterior column or also called as the dorsal column the lateral column and the anterior or the ventral Um, um column which houses all the ascending and the uh, descending tracts Uh, now coming to the various ascending and the descending tracts the most important uh, ascending uh, tract which uh, which uh, the most uh, as i mentioned the the spinal cord the white matters in the spinal cord is how, housed uh, in the uh, spinal cord in either in the dorsal column lateral column and the uh, ventral um, column so the ascending tracts uh, go from uh, uh, from the effector uh, uh, from the uh, afferents to the uh, various uh, areas of the uh, brain and the descending tracts uh, uh, the uh, Uh, it uh, relays the information from the brain to the effector um, organ so the most important uh, descending uh, ascending tract is the spinothalamic uh, uh, spinothalamic uh, tract which is in the ant antero which forms the anterolateral system of the uh, spinal cord apart from the spinothalamic tract the other tracts such as spino reticular uh, spino mesencephalic spino tectal and spino hypothalamic uh, tracts are also um, there but the most important uh, uh, tract is the spinothalamic tract which is of the localizing uh, value when we uh, deal with patients with spinal cord uh, involvement the posterior uh, the um, uh, the other uh, sensory tracts or the ascending tract is the posterior column which uh, we know as the fasciculus gracilis uh, and fasciculus uh, uh, cuneatus which subserves the uh, vibration proprioceps and the light uh, touch whereas the spinothalamic tract uh, relays the uh, pain temperature and the crude uh, touch uh, um, sensations now coming to the most important uh, descending uh, tract that is the corticospinal tract corticospinal uh, tract which decusses at the level of the uh, anterior part of the medulla and uh, crosses over to form a lateral corticospinal uh, tract and uh, and the uncrossed fibers form the anterior or the ventral corticospinal tracts so the lateral corticospinal tract is of uh, localizing uh, value uh, when we deal with the patients with uh, myelopathy other tracts such as vestibular spinal tract tectospinal tract um, uh, uh, rubrospinal tract although they do, don't have that much of localizing um, uh, values but they do modulate the motor activity to facilitate five fine movements of the uh, 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 limb muscles now coming to the somatotopic organization of the tracts this is the uh, most important slide of the uh, presentation it it tells us the uh, somatotopic organization and the lamination of the various tracts and uh, which is lateral and which is medial so in doing the clinical examination and history itself we are able to uh, figure out which part of the cord is affected and whether the uh, lesion is from lateral to medial or arising within the um, um cord now coming to the spino thalamic uh, uh, spino thalamic uh, tract the the lamination is the cervical fibers are medial and the sacral fibers are um, lateral 
and uh, similarly uh, in corticospinal pyramidal tract the cervical fibers are medial and the sacral fibers are uh, lateral whereas in contrast to spinothalamic tract and uh, corticospinal tract in the posterior column the cervical fibers are more uh, 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 lateral compared to the uh, sacral uh, fibers and the um, fasc fasciculus gracilis uh, carries the proprioception information from the uh, lower limbs and the fasciculus cuneatus uh, carries the proprioception from the um, upper limbs and the uh, and the um, trunk in addition to the white matter of the uh, spinal cord in the gray matter of the uh, uh, spinal cord uh, there are uh, two horns the, the one is the ventral horn and the dorsal horn dorsal horn is mainly uh, uh, subserves the sensory uh, functions where the uh, the neurons come and relay and uh, mostly form the second order uh, neurons for the spinothalamic tract and other uh, unconscious proprioception from the spinocerebellar tracts the ventral part of the spinal cord uh, houses the anterior uh, horns especially the uh, uh, this uh uh, the gray matter of the spinal cord is divided into various uh, laminae and typically the lamina 9 is the one which uh, uh, has houses all the uh, uh, motor uh, neurons which consist of gamma motor neurons, alpha motor neurons and uh, interneurons which help to facilitate uh, the uh, movements, fine tuning of the movements of the effector uh, muscles. In this also there is a somatotopic uh, organization. So all all the um, uh, muscles supplying, all the motor nuclei supplying the axial uh, muscles are medially uh, placed and the proximal, uh, limb, uh, proximal uh, limb muscles are medially placed. Whereas uh, the uh, uh, motor nuclei just applying the distal muscles are more laterally placed. The function of the motor neurons, whether the extensor or the flexor uh, uh, functions also has somatotopic uh, uh, representation where, uh, where the extensor, uh, extensor is more anteriorly or ventrally placed uh, and the uh, flexor, uh, flexor muscles are more um, uh, dorsally, or, uh, dorsally or posteriorly uh, placed. All this help us in uh, localizing the uh, area or the region of involvement within the spinal cord. Like I mentioned, the gray uh, matter has uh, multiple laminae. Uh, the, the lamina 9 is the most important where all the anterior horn cells are um, housed. Even in the spinothalamic uh, tract, spinothalamic tract subserves both the pain, temperature, and uh, crude uh, touch. The crude touch is more uh, ant anteriorly or ventrally placed, whereas the uh, temperature, the fibers supplying the temperature and the pain are more uh, uh, dorsally, uh, uh, dorsally placed. And here again, the lamination is cervical fibers are lateral and uh, the, the sacral fibers are more, uh, uh, sorry, sacral fibers are uh, lateral and the cervical fibers are more medial. Now coming to the cross-sectional uh, cross sectional spinal cord localization mm -hmm. and we'll be looking at the cord uh, um, syndromes. Because of the somatotopic organization of uh, uh, the tracts in the spinal cord, there are certain spinal cord syndromes which help us to localize uh, the cord lesions. Uh, the most notably ones are the co complete cord transaction, hemic cord or as we know, uh, know as brown, uh, brown sequoid syndrome, dorsal cord column syndrome uh, the dorsal with lateral uh, uh, cord uh, uh, lateral uh, corticospinal tract involvement so that is called as uh, posterior lateral syndrome otherwise called as subacute combined degeneration which is classically seen in vitamin b12 deficient, uh, deficiency central cord uh, uh, syndrome with the classical uh, prototypical um, uh, disorder being syringomyelia conus uh, medullaris is the other uh, spinal cord uh, uh, syndrome Tract specific uh, dysfunction where specific tracts, either a, a spinothalamic tract involvement or a, just a posterior column involvement or just 
uh, lateral uh, column uh, involvement that is typically seen in paraneoplastic uh, myelopathy. We will quickly go through the various cord uh, syndromes, which helps in lo localization. Complete cord syndrome is in when the whole, uh, like a complete transaction of the uh, cord which occurs, uh, where there is a complete horizontal involvement of the, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, spinal cord. And the features being bilateral UMN pattern of weakness, which is seen below the level and uh, with the sensory loss to pain, temperature and the vibration and position sense uh, below the level with autonomic dysfunction also below the level. The most uh, common etiology uh, being trauma, transverse uh, myelitis, specifically complete forms of transverse myelitis, hemorrhage into the spinal cord, epidural abscess, metastasis, necrotizing myelopathy and late ra radiation induced uh, myelopathy. Hemicord or brown sequard uh, um, syndrome, where the one half of the cord is uh, involved, both the ventral and the uh, dorsal uh, uh, portion. Here, the clinical hallmarks are ipsilateral UMN pattern of weakness below the level, LMN weakness at the level ipsilateral, ipsilateral posterior column uh, uh, involvement. Contralateral pain and temperature send a loss below the level. This is because the spinothalamic uh, tract, once they form the second order uh, 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 neurons, sensory neurons in the uh, dorsal horn, they uh, cross at the level of uh, they cross at the level of anterior uh, commissure or decusset at the level of the anterior uh, uh, commissure, and this decussation happens over a uh, few a uh, few levels. So within the core. Uh, itself the crossing over happens unlike the uh, posterior column uh, sensation so hence if one side of the cord is affected the uh, the pain fibers uh, of uh, which supplies the opposite half the uh, the other half of the uh, that spinal segment will uh, get uh, um, affected so there will be contralateral pain and temperature loss uh, in uh, below the um, um, level and uh, this is uh, classically seen in penetrating uh, traumatic uh, injuries in multiple sclerosis also asymmetric compression and uh, typically in uh, varicella zoster uh, infection uh, so this is a T2 axle of a, a spinal cord uh, MRI, which shows here uh, the one half of the spinal cord is uh, affected at the level of C6. And here uh, in the T2 SAG uh, of a sp uh, spinal cord uh, MRI, we can see there is a hypo intense lesion, which is surrounded by a uh, hyper uh, intense uh, uh, rim, which representing a, a cystic uh, lesion. And the, this is the corresponding axial section showing that it has affected the half, uh, half of the cord. So this kind of uh, lesion can pre uh, may present as a hemicord or a brown sequard uh, syndrome. The third uh, uh, classical syndrome is the central cord uh, syndrome. Here, uh, the lesion starts from the central part of the uh, um, uh, cord. So initially, when it is a small uh, uh, lesion, only the decussetting, uh, the decussetting spinothalamic fibers will get uh, uh, affected. So in case of a small lesion, starting from the central cord, there is a suspended uh, sensory uh, loss. So that is like a, a classical cape type of uh, distribution affecting the uh, shoulder arms and uh, the trunk and uh, the at the level of the trunk it sort of hangs and does not involve uh, rest of the uh, body and hence it is called as a suspended uh, sensory loss once the lesion becomes uh, big, starting from the central cord area, it starts affecting the uh, anterior horn uh, cells in the ventral part of the uh, cord uh, also. Uh, uh, so in addition to the spinothalamic fibers, the motor neurons are also involved. So then it starts uh, causing a segmental element pattern of uh, weakness at the um, uh, level. So uh, here in uh, the, like I mentioned, the hallmark disorder is the syringomyelia. Here we will have a UMN pattern of weakness below the level with upper limb uh, more involved than the um, legs and a long segment of uh, 
LMN involvement, uh, uh, which will be noted in the bilateral uh, upper limb, may be symmetrical or uh, asymmetrical depending on the etiology. But uh, the LMN is uh, because of the anterior horn cell uh, uh, involvement. There is a classical sacral sparing. Like I mentioned, the sacral fibers in the spinothalamic tract are more laterally placed. So the first, the cervical fibers will be uh, affected. And say, at, the, at the presentation, the, there will be sacral sparing, uh, uh, which will be uh, noted. So, uh, and the other hallmark feature is the segmental sensory, segmental dissociated sensory loss, which can be of patchy. So here, as we can see, the posterior columns are well preserved, whereas the spinothalamic tract involvement is there. So there is a dissociation between the pain and temperature fibers which are affected with the intactness of the posterior column sensation that is the vibration position sense and the uh, light uh, touch. So this concept of dissociation between the pain and temperature versus the uh, vibration proprioception and light touch is called as the dissociative sensory uh, loss. And the dissociative sensory loss may not be complete completely uh, uniform uh, in whatever part of the upper limbs it has involved, it can be uh, patchy. Hence, it is important to demonstrate dissociative sensory loss and suspend uh, dissociated sen uh, sensory loss in multiple dermatomes of uh, the uh, bilateral um, upper limb. Uh, apart from syringomyelia, intramedullary tumor and uh, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder, or the NMOSD uh, spectrum of uh, disorders can start as a central cord uh, uh, um, um, syndrome. So this is the classical cape-like distribution, uh, cape-like distribution of suspended uh, sensory loss, which is seen in a uh, cord syndrome. Uh, this is uh, the T2 sagittal section of uh, MRI uh, spine. So at the level of uh, C4 and uh, C4 and C5, we can see a, a hyper intense uh, lesion which is similar to that of the uh, uh, CSF intensity, and the T1 sag which shows the hypo intensity. So this is a syringomyelia showing the uh, uh, this syringomyelia which uh, presents as a central cord uh, syndrome. Now coming to the posterior column, posterior column um, um, syndrome affects only the posterior columns. So they will have uh, severe loss of vibration position sensation below the level, absent uh, reflexes in the knees and um, ankle, because uh, these are all the large fibers who go on to become the posterior um, um, column. So the reflexes will be affected. And uh, classically, they will present as uh, sensory um, ataxia. That means even they even though they will have a wide base gait, but they will be requiring visual cues and uh, uh, visual cues to uh, 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 to uh, walk. And uh, they will be thumping, like a high stepage gait will be there because the sensory uh, afferents are uh, um, lost, which go through the posterior column. So hence, they will be thumping the, uh, the floor to, feel, uh, to have a feel of the ground. If uh, the lesion uh, in the posterior column is in the cervical cord, which is classically uh, seen in cervical spondylotic myelopathy or multiple um, sclerosis, it can cause uh, Lermite's uh, sign, which is the sudden flexion of the neck, which causes uh, severe uh, burning and shooting type of pain down the bilateral upper limbs to the um, legs. The classical example uh, being uh, Tabis dorsalis, cervical spondylotic myelopathy, posterior spinal artery infarction, and early delayed radiation induced myelopathy can also have this uh, uh, picture. Also in vitamin B deficiency at the uh, beginning stage, it can involve the posterior column and subsequently can involve the lateral column, which together is called as the subacute combined degeneration. And this is the classical uh, sign, the inverted V sign, which shows the hyper intensity in the posterior um, um, column. This was a patient with a pernicious uh, anemia. Now coming to the anterior cord uh, syndrome. Anterior cord uh, syndrome is where the anterior, the ventral part and the lateral part of the cord is uh, involved, sparing the posterior uh, column. Here, the pattern of uh, involvement will be element pattern of weakness at the level of the lesion, UMN pattern below the level of the lesion. At the level of the uh, lesion, the sensory involvement will be both pain and temperature loss below the level, autonomic function uh, loss at below the level, but uh, the vibration and the position uh, sensation will be 
uh, sped and the classical or uh, the or the hallmark disorder of presenting as an anterior cord syndrome is the anterior spinal artery uh, syndrome other uh, infections such as polio virus and west nile virus also can present as anterior cord uh, syndrome posterior lateral syndrome like i mentioned earlier both posterior column and the uh, uh, cortico spinal tract the classic here also they will present with both sensory sensory ataxia and spastic gait so they will have a spastic ataxic kind of uh, um, gait where uh, there will be ataxia and also either a, uh, a circumduction while uh, walking and uh, the other features of spasticity like tripping over uh, small objects and a stiffness of the lower limbs these all can be the uh, presenting uh, features <coughs> the hallmark disorder is vitamin b12 deficiency copper deficiency <coughs> sorry a uh, cervical spondylotic myelopathy also can present uh, this way uh, it uh, 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 htlv1 associated myelopathy or tropical spastic uh, paraparesis and uh, uh, hereditary spastic uh, paraparesis uh, para although it is a, uh, a cns disorder which starts from the brain the myelopathy part of it uh, can affect both the posterior column and the lateral column hiv and paraneoplastic myelitis here uh, this is the t2 sagittal section of the um, cervical um, cord <coughs> so sir the t2 section of the um, uh, cervical spinal cord which shows the hyper intensity along the uh, posterior uh, um, column which can be classically seen in uh, vitamin uh, b12 and this was a patient with a vitamin b12 deficiency in uh, 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 paraneoplastic myelopathy in addition to tract uh, like uh, uh, dysfunction uh, uh, it causes tract uh, kind of a dysfunction here we can see the axial section which is showing the hyper intensity in the lateral uh, columns that is the cortico spinal tracts classically seen in the paraneoplastic myelopathy coming to the anterior horn syndrome then this is the part where the uh, ventral uh, part of the gray uh, matter is uh, affected which houses all the uh, anterior uh, horn cells so they can have a diffuse element pattern of the weakness like i mentioned there is a somatotopic uh, organization within the uh, within the gray matter also uh, like the uh, the axial muscles or proximal muscles being medially placed whereas the distal muscles being laterally placed the extensors are more uh, ventrally placed and the uh, um flexors are the more posteriorly uh, placed so depending on the lesion this varied uh, diffuse element pattern weakness can be there and classically all the features of the anterior horn cell presentation will be there like hyperreflexia fasciculation wasting all this will be uh, 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 seen so uh, uh, like dr uh, aditya had mentioned about uh, hirayama's uh, uh, disease that causes uh, a posterior uh, which is a disorder which is seen in young male which causes a dural detachment of the uh, of uh, dural detachment causing the cervical cord uh, uh, myelopathy affecting mainly the anterior uh, horn cells so this the typical owlie uh, appearance is seen in the axial uh, spinal uh, mri combined anterior horn and the cortico spinal uh, disease classical being uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and cervical myeloradiculopathy also can present uh, with uh, anterior horn as well as cortico spinal involvement here both umn and lmn uh, weakness will be there and uh, they, it will be a pure motor uh, syndrome and bulbar weakness may or may not be present so in als if you do a spinal uh, imaging again that same owlie appearance can be seen or snake eye uh, appearance and uh, uh, we must understand that uh, certain disorders uh, even though may, they may present as myelopathy but it is a full cns involvement so uh, it may it can have brain involvement as well as spinal cord involvement so we have to see uh, uh, while examining and taking the history we have to see which all systems are affected and order for relevant uh, imaging so this is the uh, t2 flare uh, axial suffer als patient where which shows the hyper intensity of the cortico spinal tract in the crest cerebri and the posterior limb of the internal capsule 
so uh, uh, now we are done with the cord syndrome so in the longitudinal cord localization either it can be at a foramen magnum or a upper cervical level or lower cervical or upper thoracic level thoracic lumbosacral conus medullaris or corda equina syndrome so coming to the foramen uh, uh, syndrome or the upper cervical the hallmark features is crural uh, crural uh, paresis that is uh, because the uh, uh, lesion in this area they interrupt the decussating pyramidal tract fibers which are destined for the legs because they are more uh, laterally uh, uh, placed and they cross caudal to those that of the arm so they result in the weakness of the leg and sometimes they can present as uh, uh, just uh, involvement of uh, uh, one leg like a monoparesis around the clock pattern or the Ellsberg phenomenon Ellsberg phenomenon is a term which we have heard uh, before also here the compressive lesions near the foramen magnum they may cause weakness in the ipsilateral shoulder followed by arm followed by weakness of the ipsilateral leg then the contralateral leg and finally the contralateral arm. This is like a U pattern of weakness, which is also called as the Ellsberg phenomenon. It usually presents in the upper cervical cord or a foramen magnum uh, syndrome. And typically in foramen magnum syndrome, the pain will be in the suboccipital region. And in addition to myelopathy, there can be downbeat nystagmus, cerebellar ataxia, and uh, CSF block causing raised ICP um, uh, features. All these features will help us to localize the uh, cord lesion to either upper cervical or foramen. So this is an um, um, example again, uh, T2 um, um, uh, section, uh, sorry, uh, uh, T1 um, section, which shows a lesion compressing the foramen uh, 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 magnum so the upper cervical cord is uh, compressed and here we can hardly see the cervical uh, cord and in the t2 satch we are able to see the hyper intensity and the co cord compression at the upper cervical level uh, apart from that, and there are certain signs which help us to localize whether uh, the, uh, the lesion is at a thoracic level or the cervical level. So uh, in thoracic uh, 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 myelopathy, classical presentation is that of a paraparesis. And if a beaver sign is there, then the localization is uh, to um, T10. Horner syndrome can be seen because of C8 and T1 uh, involvement. Intercostal neuralgia can be uh, present. And any lesion above uh, T6 can cause autonomic uh, reflexia. And uh, below uh, uh, T1 lesion, there won't be any uh, upper limb uh, involvement. In cervical myelopathy, if there is an involvement of the trigeminal nerve, uh, can be seen in the upper cervical uh, lesion that is C1 to uh, C4. And uh, C5 and C6 causes LMN uh, paresis at the arms and spastic legs. In C7 lesion, we will have uh, paradoxical triceps uh, um, jerks. And uh, hand atrophy can be uh, false, lo uh, false, localize, uh, false localizing sign in cervical cord. Uh, myelopathy. Dif diaphragmatic dysfunction can be seen in C3, C4, C5 uh, um, in involvement. In uh, lumbar uh, 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 lumbar uh, lumbar uh, uh, lesion, lumbar my uh, lesion uh, cord, they can have false localizing uh, signs when uh, conus corda is uh, uh, involved. I will discuss in uh, detail conus and corda in subsequent uh, slides. So conus, as we know, the uh, the spinal cord ends in adults at the level at the lower border of the um, L1. So the conus medullary syndrome will present as a early bladder uh, dysfunction. It, it will be an NML, uh, element type of bladder dysfunction with bilateral saddle syndrome sensory uh, loss because of the involvement of the S2, S3, and uh, S3, uh, 4, 5 uh, dermatomes. They can have bilateral lumbosacral element pattern of weakness, but that will be mild. So the most uh, important presentation of the conus uh, lesion is the saddle anesthesia and the element bladder uh, involvement. Common, uh, common uh, disorders which uh, present with conus syndrome is the lumbar disc disease followed by trauma or uh, epidural metastasis. This is a T2 sagittal section of uh, uh, the uh, uh, spine, uh, lumbosacral spine, which shows a uh, hyper intense uh, lesion in the uh, lower part of the cord, that is the conus, and this turned out to be a lipoma. Stop patient. 
So now the concept of conus corda uh, syndrome. So conus is uh, it's still part of the spinal cord and uh, it is formed by S3, S4, and S5 segments. Uh, there is epiconus as well, uh, which is formed by the L4, L5, S1, and S2 segments. And corda equina is from L2 roots uh, onwards. So from the L2 roots till the uh, coccygeal uh, nerve, this uh, uh, five, uh, this uh, all the corda equina roots come out away from the uh, vertebral column, like uh, vertebral column and uh, uh, from the uh, corda equina. So uh, we are always asked uh, how to differentiate between the conus, epiconus and uh, corda equina lesions. Where in theory, uh, uh, there might they, uh, they will have differentiating features, but in reality, we rarely have a lesion which specifically uh, affects only the conus or which specifically affects only the epiconus or uh, specifically affects only the corda equina. So in reality, we always see a mixture of conus, corda, uh, um, lesion. But there are certain differentiating features which uh, help us uh, to uh, uh, figure out where the lesion is, um, what part of the structure is maximally in involved by the uh, uh, the lesion. So in uh, uh, in uh, uh, coming to the uh, clinical feature of pain, so pain is most prominent uh, in the corda equina and it is uh, uh, severe compared to uh, the conus uh, lesion and it is a radicular type of uh, pain and often they are asymmetric. Uh, sensory um, changes are also asymmetric and patchy in co uh, corda equina lesion, whereas they are more symmetrical uh, in uh, conus. And in epiconus, they can be bilateral, asymmetric, and they can have dissociated sensory uh, loss at uh, times. Motor, uh, motor changes uh, is uh, motor weakness is symmetric. Uh, in conus uh, lesion, but uh, the motor weakness per se is not very marked. Uh, in uh, conus lesion, whereas asymmetric paraparesis with pain and marked atrophy of the muscles is uh, a hallmark of corda equina um, syndrome. And here the element feature is not because of the anterior horn cell, it is because of the root involvement because spinal cord has already um, ended. And uh, in epiconus, the element features which are seen in the thighs and legs, here it is because of the anterior horn cell uh, involvement. Coming to the reflex uh, involvement, uh, ankle jerks and uh, knee jerks uh, will be diminished or absent in corda equina, whereas the uh, reflexes to look out for for conus involvement is bulbocavernous anal uh, reflex uh, will be um, absent. And among the deep tendon reflexes, uh, ankle jerk can be um, absent. Here in epiconus, ankle jerk will be absent, but knee jerk may or may not be uh, present. Like I mentioned, conus, the bladder and the uh, bowel involvement will be early, whereas it will be late in the corda equina. So as the sexual dysfunction, early importance will be seen in conus. And uh, limb weakness-wise, asymmetric paraparesis is more seen in the corda uh, equina. And uh, uh, decubitus ulcers are more seen in the uh, conus, especially sacral um, source. And the um, onset it in the corda equina can be gradual or unilateral. Unilateral. It may start as uh, asymmetric and go on to, if the lesion keeps on increasing, can become uh, symmetrical. Whereas in conus, it is uh, usually uh, bilateral. So this is uh, the most common cause of corda equina syndrome is a herniated uh, um, um, disc. Here we can see um, at the level L3 and L4 uh, level, there is a, a herniated disc which is causing a compression and all the corda equina roots are sort of clumped here. Uh, this is the same at the level of the L5 and L5, uh, L5 and S1 level. There is a herniated disc which has caused the corda equina compression. And here we are hardly able to see the neural uh, foramina in comparison to this. Uh, the, uh, the commonest etiology, like I mentioned, was the disc uh, herniation and uh, chronic lumbosacral spinal stenosis. So they will come with paresthesia and classical presentation with the neurogenic claudication. Whereas uh, non-disc uh, related, the uh, other etiologies are either traumatic, neoplastic, infect infection, especially CMV, polyradiculitis, uh, itrogenic, uh, could be radiation induced, dural AV fistula and uh, 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 dural AV fistula.
transverse uh, localization now coming to the transverse localization or the cross sectional level like i mentioned like i mentioned we need to find the motor level the sensory level the reflex level and the certain special signs for each level like thoracic lumbosacral or cervical so inverted ref reflex is one important thing which we should uh, look out for that is the reflex level is absent at the level and below that lesion the ref uh, other deep tendon reflexes are uh, exact exaggerated like inverted biceps inverted supinator uh, 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 reflexes. So beaver signs uh, T10, superficial abdominal reflex uh, will be absent if the lesion is above T6 and if the lesion is at uh, T uh, 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 if the lesion is below the T12, uh, the superficial abdominal reflex will be uh, present. Cremastic reflex localizes to L2, L1, L2 bulbo cavernous uh, to the conus, anal wink also to the uh, conus. Now, coming to compressive myelopathy. Now, when, once we have decided where the lesion is, we need to know whether it is a compressive lesion or a non-compressive lesion. So, the clues which will help us to decide whether it is a compressive myelopathy is the severe local pain, which can be radicular uh, uh, local pain, also radicular and vertebral uh, pain. In addition to that, they will have early UMN uh, um, signs and uh, they will have ascending paresthesias. Uh, now, why ascending paresthesias? Because because again, the sacral fibers are more laterally uh, placed. So the compression will be from the, uh, the lateral uh, aspect. So the first, the sacral fibers will uh, get affected. They may present as a brown sequered uh, syndrome and uh, uh, they can cause local uh, deformities. So compressive myelopathy, uh, if, if uh, myelopathy has all these features, then with uh, fair certainty, we can say the lesion is a compressive lesion rather than a non-compressive lesion. Once we have decided it is a compressive lesion, we need to figure out whether it is an extramedullary lesion or an uh, uh, intramedullary lesion. For extramedullary, further can be a extradural extramedullary or intradural extramedullary. So extradural uh, lesion is either from a degenerated vertebra or a vertebral metastasis, which uh, compresses the uh, the dura and the rest of the uh, structure of the spinal cord classically seen in tumors and uh, trauma metastasis especially whereas intra uh, uh, dural uh, intra dural neoplasms are more of an indolent tumor such as meningioma neurofibromas schwannomas all these these are again uh, extramedullary but uh, uh, intra uh, intra dural and they do not present with uh, local pain or vertebral uh, pain like that of extra dural extra medullary uh, the, we are often asked about the uh, difference between the extramedullary versus intramedullary lesion, whether the lesion has started from the outside and coming inside or the lesion started within the intrinsic cord lesion, which is uh, spreading or ex expanding out, uh, outside. So in extramedullary lesions, uh, pain is that of a radicular um, type and it is early. Whereas in intern, intramedullary lesion, it is a uh, poorly localized pain or a tracked pain or also called as a funicular uh, pain and it can be of a burning uh, type. Sensory deficit is contralateral loss of the pain and temperature with ipsilateral loss of the uh, proprioception to think uh, that of a brown sequoid syndrome. Whereas in intramedullary, uh, we should think about about the uh, syringomyelia or intrinsic cord uh, tumors, which again can cause the dissociation sensory loss and patchy distribution. Pain and temperature uh, loss is more uh, maximum at the level of the uh, le uh, lesion, but it is less marked at the uh, level of the lesion in the intramedullary. Uh, uh, Element involvement in extramedullary is segmental, whereas in intramedullary, it can go across multiple uh, segments and can be associated with atrophy and fasciculation, again, because of the anterior horn cell uh, involvement. Upper motor neuron involvement is pro prominent in extramedullary and but late in intramedullary. And the reflexes are affected uh, uh, or increased early in the extramedullary and uh, late involvement of the DTRs are noted in intramedullary uh, lesion. Corticospinal tract being a lateral column are affected early. 
and trophic changes are more marked in the intramedullary lesions because of the uh, damage to the decussetting spinothalamic uh, fibers. So um, the extradural, the most common being metastasis, arachnoiditis, disc herniation. Intramedullary is the, uh, the tumors, the primary spinal cord uh, tumors such as ependymoma, astrocytoma. Intradural, uh, extramedullary, the most common being nerve sheath tumors, meningioma, schwannoma, arachnoid cyst and all. Non-compressive myelopathy in uh, a non-compressive myelopathy, like mentioned, will have uh, uh, more of a dysesthesia. Could be because of a posterior column um, involvement or burning and tingling sensation, rather than a radicular or a bone pain. And they have a diffuse element at the level of the process. They can have uh, dissociated sensory loss because it is a, it will be an intrinsic cord uh, lesion and a descending sensory loss with sacral uh, sparing. brown sequard syndrome is usually not uh, seen in non-compressive myelopathy, and uh, early sphincter involvement in conus medullaris lesion with saddle anesthesia is uh, um, seen. So to summarize, when we come to the localization of the spinal cord, we need to see within the cord, which are the longitudinal stru structure uh, affected along the cord, what is the transverse localization and uh, around the uh, cord, which is the circumferential localization. So you don't call, uh, did you get the name? No. So, uh, uh, for a quick re a recap, for the, what are the signs which are strongly suggestive of spinal cord uh, involvement? If there is a suspended uh, sensory loss, sensory level on the trunk, spinal cord uh, track, spinal track crossed findings, dissociative sensory loss, root plus long tract signs. Uh, Lermite signs, Tufts phenomenon, which is classically seen in multiple sclerosis. Tonic spasms are this uh, a sudden onset involuntary flexor spasms, uh, uh, which are seen in uh, cord lesions and urinary retention. Then we are pretty sure it is a spinal cord uh, lesion. Other clues being bilateral greater than unilateral motor and sensory uh, involvement, tight band-like sensation around the chest or the abdomen, neurogenic claudication for corda uh, equina and the classical spinal spinal cord syndromes, inverted biceps, brachioradialis, supinator reflex also have a good localizing uh, value. Uh, whereas uh, signs consistent with but not diagnostic of uh, spinal cord, if there is symmetrical sensory loss with normal reflexes, ascending sensory loss, hyporeflexia, exertional worsening of the symptoms, the other structure can also cause the similar uh, symptoms. But there are signs which are not suggestive of spinal cord is the cranial nerve deficits apart from the fifth nerve and uh, uh, paratonia, pure element signs, stiffness rather than spasticity as seen in stiff persons syndrome or Parkinson's disease. If there is brainstem involvement with UMN element, then to consider ALS. Weakness with normal sensation and normal DTRs to think of neuromuscular junction defects, proximal muscle weakness, myopathy. Now, quickly, we'll go through the uh, just the uh, hallmark uh, etiology of the spinal cord uh, disorders. The etiology uh, for determining the etiology of the spinal cord uh, disorders, duration is very important. That is time to nadir from the time of the onset to the maximum neurological deficit. If it is within the first 12 hours, it is called as hyperacute. And the classical uh, etiology is vascular involvement or uh, um, sometimes trauma. Acute to subacute can be between one to 21 days and the classical involvement uh, uh, etiology is the myelitis which could be idi idiopathic transverse myelitis or inflammatory like the primary demyelinating disorders or the uh, uh, the secondary autoimmune disorders affecting the um, cord chronic is uh, labeled when they are more than 21 days and other causes like uh, structural causes nutritional toxic sometimes paraneoplastic neoplasm primary progressive multiple sclerosis all can have the chronic progress um, um, course. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the acute onset, we should always consider uh, uh, vascular and uh, structural causes of the vascular hyperacute, uh, such as anterior spinal artery uh, infarction or posterior spinal artery infarction or hematomyelia, there's a bleed into the cord, they all have uh, hyperacute uh, 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 presentation. Whereas in subacute uh, um, onset, the inflammatory demyelinating uh, disorders, the classical ones which we know as multiple sclerosis, NMOSD disorder, or NMO uh, disorder, 
edem that is the acute disseminated en encephalomyelitis uh, mog antibody uh, uh, disorders and other autoimmune disorders which have uh, spinal cord involvement such as sarcoidosis jogren uh, syndrome paraneoplastic all these have subacute uh, uh, onset even uh, infections uh, uh, specifically tuberculosis uh, syphilis uh, brucellosis with the cord uh, involvement viral uh, infections hiv hsv varicella can also have a subacute uh, um, course chronic uh, progressive again can be further divided into vascular inflammatory or demyelinating uh, infectious par uh, paraneoplastic uh, uh, neoplastic structural hereditary toxic or uh, metabolic among the vascular causes dural venous uh, dural arterial venous fistula uh, which causes venous hypertension and cord edema and can present as a uh, myelopathy cavernous sinus uh, uh, ma cavernous malformation or uh, a abms can also abms of, of the spinal cord can have a chronic progressive with recurrent partial uh, myelitis uh, inflammatory uh, apart uh, uh, inflammatory or uh, uh, demyelinating the usual uh, the my, uh, multiple sclerosis nmo sd and uh, uh, spinal cord uh, sarcoidosis uh, paraneoplastic in a setting of uh, malignancy, infectious, back, uh, especially in our setting, tuberculosis, syphilis, and uh, 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 viral infections such as HTLV can have a prolonged uh, um, um, course. Structural lesions, the co most common being cervical spondylotic uh, myelopathy. Hereditary, uh, hereditary myelopathies per se, they ju just don't affect the, uh, the spinal cord. Often they will have other structure involvement, either the brain or the peripheral uh, nerve. So here the involvement of the cord cannot be seen in um, isolation. So the vascular uh, myelopathies, the most important being the anterior spinal artery uh, infarction, which causes the anterior cord uh, syndrome. So, the little bit about the blood supply of the spinal cord. Uh, the spinal cord segment is supplied by the single uh, anterior spinal uh, artery, which is a branch of the descending branch of the vertebral artery, and a paired posterior. Uh, spinal artery, which is also a descending branches of the vertebral artery. Then each segment is further uh, supplied by a uh, radicular artery or a radiculomedullary artery. So at the cervical level, that can come from vertebral uh, artery or a thyrocervical trunk. At a thoracic level, it comes from the intercostal arteries from the iota. And uh, at a uh, at a, uh, at a lumbar uh, 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 at a, a lumbar level, it comes directly from the branches of the um, iota so this radiculomedullary arteries uh, supply uh, the uh, the they uh, sort of uh, boost the anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal artery has at least uh, uh, 14 to 16 radiculomedullary arteries uh, feeding them. So the posterior spinal artery strokes are very uh, rare. And whereas uh, the uh, arteries uh, which uh, feed the anterior spinal artery uh, are the great anterior radiculomedullary artery, the most important being uh, 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 the uh, artery uh, radicularis magna, that is the artery of Adam Kiewitz, uh, which uh, uh, supplies from uh, T9, T10 to L1, um, L2. And the anterior spinal artery strokes are more common because they are not fed by too many radicomedullary arteries and hence they are more uh, prone for they are more uh, prone for uh, infarction so uh, the uh, anterior spinal artery the, this part will be the anterior spinal artery and the posterior uh, part will be by the posterior uh, spinal artery and the watershed zone is the t4 uh, zone uh, which is more susceptible to the um, uh, uh, ischemia, especially in a setting of uh, hypotension and prolonged uh, cardiac uh, um, uh, prolonged cardiac surgery. So this is a T2 SAG, which shows a hyperintensity in the cervical cord, and the DWI section of that shows a diffusion uh, restriction, which shows the uh, infarct. Hematomalia is when there is a bleed into the spinal cord that can be either because of a trauma or an AVM or because of anticoagulant uh, um, um, induced and uh, they can 
be of heterogeneous uh, intensity and can be quite quickly picked up on the uh, um, MRI. So this is uh, an example of a spinal AVM, which shows multiple flow voids in the T2 sag section of the uh, uh, cervical cord uh, uh, MRI, which represents a spinal cord uh, AVM. And this is a small SDH. Um, uh, SDH uh, in the uh, in the thoracic cord, and uh, this is a small SAH subarachnoid hemorrhage. These are all anticoagulant induced uh, uh, bleed. The autoimmune myelopathies, the most common, uh, although they're rare disorders, the most common ones which we see in our setting is uh, transverse myelitis, multiple sclerosis, NMO spectrum disorder, MOG antibody disorder, sarcoidosis, Jogren's, SLE, and uh, even with abnorm a normal MRI, other autoimmune disorders can also uh, present with uh, my a myelopathy. So we need to know what is transverse myelitis and what is longitudinally extensive uh, transverse myelitis. So myelitis is when there is an inflammatory disease of the spinal cord. So transverse myelitis is when there is a motor weakness, sensory level and an autonomic uh, uh, involvement at the uh, below the level of the lesion. So that can be complete or can be uh, partial. Complete will be like a cord transaction syndrome where uh, all the tracts will be involved and everything will be UMS below the lesion, element at the level of the lesion with the sensory and the autonomic involvement. Partial can be asymmetric neurological uh, um, um, uh, involvement. Longitudinal extensive uh, transverse myelitis is a lesion which extends more than three or more vert uh, vertebral uh, segments. And, uh, uh, and uh, short segment lesions are less than uh, three uh, vertebral segment uh, involvement. A secondary transverse myelitis is uh, related to the systemic inflammatory autoimmune disorder, like I mentioned, SLE, Jogren's, sarcoidosis, and they can also present as a complete uh, transverse myelopathy or like a, a longitudinal extensive transverse uh, myelitis. So this is a T2 SAG of one spinal MRI, which shows a longitudinal extensive transverse myelitis spanning over five vertebral um, segments. And uh, uh, this is a, a LETM, uh, which shows classically expansion of the cord is also seen. This is classically seen in um, uh, NMO spectrum uh, disorder, where they can present as a central cord syndrome. Here we can see in the axial section, the whole cord is looking uh, hyper uh, intense. Here the central part of the cord is hyper intense. So uh, apart from NMO, EDEM, uh, other autoimmune uh, disorder, para-infectious causes can also present as LETM. Paraneoplastic also can present as LETM. But at the same time, we also should uh, rule out other mimics of uh, LETM, which are not inflammatory or demyelinating, such as intra, uh, uh, intrinsic cord lesion, radiation myelitis, sometimes vitamin B12 deficiency, nitrous oxide toxicity, vascular myelopathies like spinal dural, AV fistula. Here, because of the venous hypertension, they can cause a lot of cord edema and can mimic like an um, um, LETM. Uh, so differentiating features between N MS, NMO, SD, MOGAD, I, want to, I won't go into detail, but having said that, just uh, in this group of patients, both brain and spine imaging should be there and overall the assessment of which kind of disorder needs to be um, made. Typically, MS causes short segment peripherally placed uh, lesions, whereas NMOSD causes more of a central cord lesions affecting both the cervical and the thoracic. And MOGAR classically uh, uh, involves the conus uh, medullaris uh, in addition to the um, optic uh, uh, neuritis. So this is a, a case of NMO disorder, which shows a central cord uh, uh, hyperintensity, whereas this is a plaque which is uh, sitting peripherally placed, which is a short, uh, short segment plaque classically seen in MS. Uh, Mogard can mimic uh, LETM. Uh, it can uh, classic. It can also affect the cervical and the thoracic cord, but the classical involvement is in the conus um, cord. Neurosarcoidosis, uh, the classical uh, present uh, uh, presentation of the myelopathy in the MRI finding, we can see subpile enhancement, especially in the ventral area, and the something called as a trident uh, sign, where is the subpile uh, uh, region in the uh, ventral uh, 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 portion is. Uh, uh, sorry, the dorsal portion is affected and on the contrast, it uh, takes up the contrast looking like a trident uh, um, sign. 
Uh, infectious uh, myelopathies, the important things to look out is the epidural abscess. In fact, and uh, in, infectious myelopathies may not just be limited to the spinal cord. They can involve the cord and the uh, radicals. Here, uh, they can cause both compressive and uncompressive myelopathies, both extradural, extramedullary or intramedullary um, lesions. Epidural abscess is a neurosurgical emergency and should not be missed. So in a patient who has come with midline back pain, neck pain, fever and progress limb weakness with or without bowel bladder involvement, we should clinically suspect uh, epidural abscess and uh, get an uh, urgent uh, neuroimaging because this will require um, um, drainage. The risk factors being uh, the local skin infection, impaired immune uh, status, and most of them are hematogenous uh, spread of bacteria or direct uh, extension of a local uh, infections. The commonest organisms can be staphylococcus um, um, aureus GNB depending on the um, host and tuberculosis also can present as an epidural abscess and can be a part of the POTS um, um, disease. Treatment is drainage and decompressive laminectomy with debridement and a long-term um, antibiotic. And in a setting of a particular host, whether it is a, a, a immunocompromised host, multiple infections can affect the uh, um, uh, cord causing myelitis or myeloradiculitis. And uh, um, this herpes virus, varicella zoster virus also have predilection for the spinal cord. Among the flabby viruses, we know dengue, Zika, West Nile, uh, 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 Japanese encephalitis and Westline virus can have uh, anterior uh, horn cells involvement of the uh, uh, spinal cord. Here uh, shows the uh, this uh, sagittal section shows the contrast enhancement of the uh, the radicals in the cord aequina um, roots. This is the example of a pod spine where in tuberculosis we see the vertebral uh, destruction and causing a cord uh, um, compression. In the brucella, it can cause an anterior epidural abscess also causing the cord compression. HIV myelopathy, typically they can present as a posterior lateral. Again, the um, snake eye, owl eyes, uh, of the um, columns which is um, seen. Neoplastic tumor can be extradural, extramedullary or intradural, extramedullary, intradural, uh, intramedullary. While discussing the extramedullary and intramedullary lesions, we have discussed what kind of tumors can cause various type of syndromes causing the myelopathy. This is an intrinsic cord tumor of a cervical cord and this is an intradural uh, uh, extramedullary uh, lesion which is a uh, um, uh, uh, which is a uh, which is a, uh, a schwannoma which has been uh, shown in this. The vertebral mets, which can cause uh, compressive uh, myelopathies. Coming to the structural, the commonest which we see in our cl clinical uh, practice is the cervical spondylotic uh, myelopathy, where the disc goes out and causes the compression of the spinal cord. Sometimes they can present as a LETM kind of a picture, which on contrast will show this transverse band, or also called as the pancake like of uh, enhancement. Nutritional toxic myelopathies, especially vitamin B12, copper, folate, vitamin E, all of them can cause posterior column uh, syndromes. Nitrous oxide uh, uh, toxication can causes vitamin B12 uh, deficiency, which again causes as a posterior column. Lastly, the hereditary myelopathies, uh, the, um, uh, the disorders like spinal cerebellar ataxias, uh, 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 motor neuron disorders, leukodystrophies, hereditary spastic paraparesis, mitochondrial disorders, in addition to other structure involvement can have uh, spinal cord uh, involvement. The commonest autosomal recessive ataxia, which we see is the uh, Frederick's uh, ataxia, where the dorsal, spine, dorsal and mental spinocerebellar tracts are uh, atrophied, which can be seen in the thinning of the uh, cervical cord. Scar can have cord uh, um, thinning. And uh, uh, autosomal dominant leukodystrophy, various leukodystrophies can have cord thinning and can present as a spastic paraparesis or a uh, myelopathy. Uh, 
सकते हैं सो इन कंक्लूजन वी नीड टू रिमेंबर द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एनाटमी ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड टू फिगर आउट टू लोकलाइज फ्रॉम द हिस्ट्री एंड द एग्जामिनेशन दैट वेर इज दीशन वेदर इट इज इंट्रा एक्सियल और इट एक्स्ट्रा एक्सियल एंड इफ इट इज इंट्राड्यू इंट्रा ड्यूरल और एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल और इंट्रा मेडलरी और एक्स्ट्रा मेडलरी एंड whether it is a compressive or a non compressive uh, lesions and what are the other structures uh, um, affected so at the end of clinical history and examination we need to have a motor sensory uh, and a reflex uh, level uh, which will help us to localize for the spinal cord disorders thank you for patience thank you dr deepthi thank you so much for this uh, extensive lecture uh, it's it's a very useful lecture clinically as well as for our students thank you so much for coming and taking us this lecture thank you so much